right, so coming at you with a new video today. Um, wanted to go ahead and go over how to decode 1973 through 79 Ford pickup truck and 78 through 79 Ford Bronco VIN numbers. Um, this is a topic that has been touched on a lot on a lot of forums, so I'm not going to go too in-depth with this. I did want to kind of clarify some things that you can't really get with regular VIN decoders over going through particular year model um, manuals from Ford. We'll touch on those exact um, numbers that you can't pull from regular VIN decoders in a moment. I wanted to go ahead and go over whose VIN number we're going to be going over. Um, so Adam O'Gara over at Paper Beats Rock um, has his uh, Blue Bronco, the 1978. Um, and his Blue Bronco kind of had a different axle shoved into it, it looked like. Um, appeared to be an 8.8 .8 axle as opposed to being a 9-inch or the Dana 44 that could also be available with the lighter trucks and Broncos. Um, so I had started this in decoding this ring gear, um, actually not even ring gear, but this axle tag, um, going over the model uh, ratio, uh, ring gear size, plant codes, dates, so on and so forth. Um, and if you can make this out, I, it actually came out for the model number for the WDR-D to be a Bronco F100 axle from 83. Um, the year manufacturer date actually came out to 1982, uh, later 82, indicating 1983. And the uh, WDR-D actually started in about 80, but that particular model that I was searching, especially with that plant code, came up to be about 82, 83. Um, so I found out that somebody kind of shoved the wrong axle into it. And without going too into depth, um, I'll go ahead and I'll link his video um, above. If you want to go ahead and watch that, um, kind of pester him a little bit. But what I did want to go over was uh, he was curious about his VIN number and some other information for it. And while I am not Marty Reports, which I do suggest if you want to go in-depth and find out how much... Uh, <clears throat> how much uh, or how many vehicles uh, were made with your particular... Um, with your particular like options um, and so forth, they go more into depth than even I can go. Um, I'm just using a basic VIN decoder, um, which I'll be showing you in a moment, and uh, original light truck manuals from Ford. So I do wanna go over a few things too, because there are some things with your body codes that um, a lot of online decoders don't go over, and these books will. Um, they will show up um, as, uh, what would you call it, uh, Ford internal use only codes. But if you go and get some of these manuals, you can actually start decoding uh, even further into your body codes. But anyhow, um, I have Adam O'Gara's uh, 78 Bronco right here, and he did give me permission to go ahead and share this with you. Um, I have his VIN, or VIN tag that I've kind of replicated here to go ahead and show you a little easier. Um, on uh, on what, if it, or what his identifiers and stuff are. And one of the books that I use is my 79 manual in this case, because this will also cover 78 um, and some of 77. But I can go over, and we'll get that out of the way. I can go over a lot of data um, with these books. Um, it will also give me a full breakdown, but um, it'll go through some other options that some decoders actually don't really give you the right information for. I've had some wrong dates, um, some wrong uh, serial numbers. About the best one that I could find, and I'll go ahead and hit on that real fast on the screen capture, so I'll flip you over. Um, so that's mine, and this is, uh, if you haven't seen Paper Beats Rock, this is the video right here, uh, 78 Bronco for $500, was it worth it? Um, but anyhow, this is the video that I'm touching on today and the Bronco that I'm touching on today. Um, but one of the best resources that you can get if you don't have these books um, is the VIN Decoding Through Fortification.net. Now, they don't give you everything in these, and when I go ahead and I touch on that, I will be talking about the body codes here, because this big gap right here, you can actually decode with the books that I have. Um, you can easily find these uh, Ford manuals. Um, I will try and give you some links, but they'll probably expire by the time that I get them up. Anyhow, um, so to go ahead and touch on VIN numbers, I'll go ahead and go back down low. We'll take this book and put it back. Um, to go ahead and touch on VIN numbers, I'll put that there for a bookmark. Um, the biggest thing that people want decoded is their actual uh, serial number uh, down here to find out what their year date was. Um, sometimes the year date will be marked down low, but um, some other model information up here that'll give you some uh, information for like engine codes, assembly plants, um, and your truck series. 
Um, the other one is a lot of people like to know what their body codes are that give you the information for like colors and stuff like that, uh, interior and exterior optional equipment. But we'll go ahead and go down the list here. So I went through um, Adam's VIN number. So his VIN number being U as in uniform, 15, H as in hotel, L as in Lima, uh, Charlie Alpha, 23, and then I omitted the last two numbers. Um, those aren't too, too big of a deal. This is just one block chunk. Um, so that VIN number comes up as the truck series is U15. Now this is in particular a Bronco code. Um, you're not going to find that on the fortification website. They will only cover pickup trucks um, and some of the heavy utility vehicles. They don't actually cover Bronco. Um, so that doesn't really give you all the information that you need if you have a 7879 Bronco. Um, so his truck series is actually a, a Bronco um, light duty truck. Um, sometimes they call it a wagon in some of the manuals. Um, I won't go over that. Um, and then his engine code, so this is that first blockchain right there for the truck series. That just tells you what you're working on. F is usually F-series truck. Um, so that next little chunk is right after this red line right here, and this identifier is for your engine code. Um, his engine code being H comes up. Um, if I was to search for a 73 through 76 truck, it would come up as an 8-cylinder 390 two-barrel, 2BBL um, two indicating two-barrel intake. Um, so that had a two barrel carb on it, but this not being 73 through 76 and this being a 78, 79 Bronco, actually 78 in particular, um, you're going to fall under the 77 through 79 category of the H code, which is the eight cylinder 351 M two barrel. Um, so we now know that that was a 351 M behind it or, uh, uh, in front of the transmission. Um, so that code will go ahead and indicate my engine code. Um, you can go all of the, or over all of this in fortification. These right here will mostly carry over unless you have Bronco for this part. Um, the next identifier here is Lima, which is going to be your assembly plant. Uh, Lima indicating Michigan truck plant. That was uh, the same for 73 through 79. Um, there are other plants, but this one right here never changed years for the assembly plant uh, identifier. Um, and then following after the Lima, the CA2300 uh, in this case, like I said, I omitted the last two numbers. Um, those are going to be like a falling category. So you have serial number ranges um, that will fall within different year sets. So in this case, 1978 started with Alpha Echo 0001. That was the first serial number in that series um, for 1978 trucks and Bronco. Um, all the way through CK9999. So, um, well, one extra nine, but anyhow. Uh, so that VIN number right there being Charlie Alpha falling before Charlie Kilo um, will fall in this in-between here and be a 1978 production vehicle. So that pretty much tells you that little chunk of information. The rest of this warranty tag actually tells you quite a lot, and I want to go over one thing with it that a lot of people get confused about, and one of those is the color of this plate. If you have a black plate or a gray plate, that will indicate what type of paint was used when your vehicle was built. The majority of these will be black plates. If you have a truly black plate, you, your truck was used uh, uh, an acrylic paint. Um, acrylic paint was probably one of the top paints that they were using at the Ford manufacturers. Some commercial vehicles, and I don't know what pickup trucks or Broncos, did use a gray identifier plate for the warranty tag. Now this tag is that door, or that little door tag that's pop riveted in. I uh, forgot to cover that. But if you have a gray plate here, you actually were using a non-acrylic paint to paint that vehicle. That's not very common, 73 to 79. I have seen it on commercial trucks, things like the chassis cabs, things like that. But I haven't seen a lot of it. Um, most, most dealer production were all acrylic paint that I've seen. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not an expert. So anyhow, to go ahead and cover over all that, we have all these small identifiers right here. And this is where a lot of people get confused. Um, so the first thing I'm going to start with, I'm just going to go from top left all the way out over and then down to the bottom. Um, we're going to go over the wheelbase, and I'm really hoping that you can see this. So when you have your wheelbase, you're going to have this little WB identifier, Whiskey Bravo. <clears throat> and that right there is going to tell you the actual inches between center of axle to center of axle um, between your front and rear axle, how long that is, your wheelbase. That can make a big difference in like towing other things. So... This being a Bronco, it's going to be 104 inches. That is a very short wheelbase. Um, you know, about the average for most trucks is going to be like 133 standard cab, stuff like that. 
um, you can get larger and whatnot. I have like my F-350. Um, I do not recall what the wheelbase is that off the top of my head because that's one thing I don't always remember. <clears throat> Sorry, coffee in the morning. That always kills me. So anyhow, um, with your wheelbase, this will tell you what your center is at axle to center axle was factory um, from front to back. Uh, that will be your true wheelbase. Um, that's just measured in inches. The next one you're going to have is your color code. Um, this color code being S indicates that it was a 73 to 79 color used uh, or used, I'm sorry, 73 to 79. And this color was had two different names. There was dark blue metallic and midnight blue metallic. I do not know which one was used when. Um, some of that gets covered over at Fortification, and I will jump over onto that. They will give you color codes uh, for your exterior paint, and you can go ahead and go through and dig through all of these. Um, so <clears throat> this one being S, we got five over there. You have uh, dark blue metallic, midnight blue metallic right there. And that was a color that was used from 73 to 79. Now, if you really want to get in depth in this, you can get the PPG, um, the PPG color codes. Um, some people have scanned those. Uh, you can also still buy them. They were a book that was provided to dealers and also people that were uh, dealing with PPG paints. Uh, PPG, I think, was the original supplier, from what I recall. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there. So anyhow, you can go ahead and decode your colors all through here. Uh, that's not a huge deal. Um, they give you a lot of stuff for, you know, finding your plants and everything else here, too. Uh, just to touch on them. I do like fortification, but they're not perfect. Um, so going back to <clears throat> Adam's uh, Vintag, uh, the next thing that we will have is your model code. Um, so the model code is listed right here. Now, some people will see some of these and they'll see things like uh, you have an F-350 and it says F-355. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're a heavier truck um, or like it's a 355 truck. It's not telling you that your F-150 is an F-152. Um, in this case, this is a U-150. So this indicates that this is a slightly heavier truck. Um, most of the body or the model codes that you'll look up, it will just give you a standard identifier here. In this case, four wheel drive Bronco wagon. That is actually what Ford calls that. Um, you can kind of get into different capacities, but that's easier to figure out with your axle codes and your GVW weights, which we'll go over in a second. Um, so this being GVW, um, you know, this just gives you the basic range of what this is. It's essentially like a 150 truck, like an F-150 pickup truck. Just it's a Bronco because it's U-code. Um, anything that's U-code is going to be coming up as a Bronco wagon. Um, so the next one is the one that I want to kind of touch on both on fortification and on here. So when you go through your body codes, which is located here, the Charlie Alpha 2, this is kind of three different sections here. Now, if you go over fortifications, um, things for the body code, which I have broken down here, they will tell you that the middle digit is for Ford internal use only. These I like to do through the Ford manuals. Um, Fortification used the Ford Truck Master Parts Catalog from 79 to go ahead and decode some of these. Well, the Master Truck Parts Catalog doesn't give you as much information as the Light Truck, truck Shop Manual, and I'll be showing that you that in a moment. So we have the CA2, so you have to think of this as different digits. So we have the C. Uh, C coming up from the um, body code in this book here comes up as vinyl bucket seats. That does not give you the color. That's just what type of bucket seat or seat that you had. Um, this will give you different identifiers. You can get like a bench seat, folding bench seat, things like that. This is the vinyl bucket seat being a Bronco because it would have had a center console in it. Um, this second identifier will tell you the color of the interior. That will tell you door panels and usually the seats, just the just upholstery. But we'll go ahead and swap over here to uh, fortification real fast. And fortification for the body code will go through the first digits. So you have B through G, K through O, 2 through 6. Um, this one being a C code, you're going to be B through G. It doesn't really give you anything for what B through G means. Um, so this can be kind of confusing. Now I do have 78 selected, so that's not a big deal. So that's the trim codes. I can click on this and it will go through some of the codes here, but it doesn't cover Bronco. F100 350, through 350, no Bronco. So to decode this is going to be kind of a little hard. Um, you have your second digit. It says for Ford internal control only. So that's pretty much just for Ford's use only. Um, this is not helpful. 
that would be what the master parts catalog would tell you also. So fortification is not wrong for what they're using for their source, which is listed right here. 73 to 79 Ford truck master parts catalog, October 79. This is correct. For the light truck shop manual, this is not correct. Third digit will give you quite a bit. Um, in this case, so we have CA2, so that would be the two digit. In this case, we do not have anything that is listed here. We got a three. And the reason for this is, is that this is covering pickup trucks. This does not cover Bronco. So this will usually give you a description of what kind of truck you have on the rear end and options. So cab parts, trim, things like that, or in this case, it's telling you you're a crew cab, exempting crew cab, Ranger XLT trim. Um, so this is kind of like your trim level of sorts. Uh, and then your behind the cab parts are a coating right here. So that will tell you things like what's on your tailgate, if you had stuff like spare tire carriers, things like that. Uh, spare tire carriers being usually earlier trucks. But again, since this does not cover uh, Bronco, we would have to go in through this book right here, which I'll go ahead and swap to now. So this would be our initial VIN bookmark. And this is our axle. So we will go ahead and go to our body codes. And if you look right here, we have our body codes. And I'll try and make this as slick as I can without getting a bunch of... I got a bunch of ink on my hands from uh, work, sadly. I work with a lot of CIJ printers. So our body code is right here, three digits. This is the breakdown of the three digits. Well, when you go through and you want to do a VIN for a Bronco, we've got our C code. C code being Bronco and Ranger, or Bronco Ranger in particular, because you have Bronco Custom, Bronco Ranger. That's your other trim level. Then you have light truck, Ranger bench seats, Ranger XLT benches, Ranger Lariat benches. This all goes under your first little code. So you have an actual identifier for Bronco. Um, the identifier for Adam's truck is actually the C for a vinyl bucket seat. So you have a vinyl coated bucket seat on there um, being Ranger trim. So the truck is obviously a Ranger trim vehicle. Don't know if it's XLT or not, but we have a vinyl bucket there. Our second code is going to go ahead and give us our interior colors. So this is our second code here. And when we go over to our VIN number, so we have the identifier of C for the first one, A. When we go to A code here, the color was black. That's pretty much all it gives you. It just tells you what color you had. These were the color options. So you had the black interior package in vinyl seats. The next one is going to be the body type code. This will tell you stuff that's options for the back end of the vehicle. Now, being that it's a Bronco, the Bronco is going to come up with things for like uh, your top. If you have something like a chassis cab, it's going to tell you that. It's going to tell you it's a chassis cab. So you could have had either the stake bed that was optional or you could have had no bed at all. And they just gave you a set of tail lights and no bumper. Um, so in this case, being a Bronco, when we go through and we find the two digit, our two digit is right here for our regular code. And our regular code is a Bronco black fiber roof. So this is our third code too. So this had the black fiberglass roof, which is pretty much the topper. You could have had a white one or a sand one. So sand, I haven't seen a lot. I've seen a few that are white. Black is probably about the most common. When you have a chassis cab or an F-350 or anything else like that, not touching on the Broncos or anything, you could have a platform stake bed. That would be this code right here, number nine. You could have a standard chassis cab, which was blank. That would be an eight. You can have extra digits on the back end. So you could have a six-man crew cab code. So this is a six-man crew cab. Or a super cab code, a P. And that could have been fallen under the chassis cab. So you would have had like P8, G8. Platform stakes again. Um, I think this is for the shorter trucks for the five identifi identifier because you could get anything from an F100 all the way up to an F350 and platform stake. Um, you could also get it as just a straight chassis cab. So you could still have an eight code. Uh, style side pickup truck. So you have pretty much your uh, your uh, flat, flat sided bed and you could have a super cab code and a crew cab code or flare side pickup truck for a three code. But you can see most of these codes here. So if you need to see these, you're great. If not, I can provide you a screenshot of this. So if you, if you need one, you know, send me a DM or um, go ahead and comment and I will try and get this page to you. Um, I kind of want to talk with either Keith or somebody else at Fortification, maybe see if they can maybe update these. Um, because that'd be cool to kind of have for online stuff. And I do have a 76 and a 79 manual and do intend on getting more. 
Um, I'm actually trying to track down a 70 or a 78 manual right now. Uh, these come in sets as well, but this one right here is about the most important for identifying. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, kick over. We do have other body codes over here that are Econoline uh, vans. I'm not going to go over those. I'm really going over F-series and all that. So this right here is what these books are good for. Um, I've picked these up at garage sales all the way down to like bookstore sales and the likes. But you can also find them online occasionally. Um, worth the money. So um, that's the only thing for a body code that you really have to worry about. And then the model code I also pulled from this manual here. Um, I won't go over that. That's just kind of a dead set model code. And if you have a U, you have a Bronco. Um, next identifier is going to be your transmission. That's going to be your G code here. Uh, G code just comes up as automatic. That's pretty much inferring the C63 speed. Um, that was really the only automatic that they had other than the, um, uh, what do you call it? Actually, we'll go over it real fast. We'll find where our transcodes are. How about that? So we have our transcodes here. So you could have the three-speed manual transmission for the Econoline, Cruzomatic, Clark manual, four-speed. Those are a little weird one. But you can have different identifiers for Bronco, F100, and F350. Now these are the same shared with pickup trucks. So if you look up a pickup truck code, they'll come up the same. When you search and you get a C6, you're only going to come up as automatic, that being G-code. You could have the Ford manual uh, three-speed, uh, the Warner four-speed manual, new process four-speed manual, that's the 435, but this could also be interchangeable with the T18 because the T18 was used interchangeable with the NP435. Uh, Clark manual four-speed with overdrive, and then the automatic C6, but this is only a fleet code for the X code. So this would only come on with like commercial trucks and things like that. So when you're talking about a regular uh, dealer vehicle and you got a G code, you pretty much have a C6 automatic. Um, so yeah, that should cover that right there. We'll go ahead and kind of carefully fold this up. I don't want this book coming apart because this thing is invaluable. So anyhow, um, going ahead and moseying on, the next one is the axle code. This is what a lot of people are trying to go after, and that's that top right corner there. This is a two-digit identifier. Your first two digits are going to indicate your rear axle type. The front one is going to tell you options for your front axle. Usually when you have a 4x4, it's just going to tell you whether or not you have power steering or not. In this case, this is one of those. So um, if you have no code there, usually that's indicating that you have a two-wheel drive. I think there was a code for that. You know, we're not going to dig through that right now. We're just focusing on the Bronco for now. If you want more information, I can make another video later and just get, kind of go over the options because this is getting long enough as it is. So anyhow, uh, axle code being 16J. 16 is inferring that it's got the rear axle. So that's the rear axle code, two, first two digits. That was available from 75 to 79 for this code. It was a 350 gear ratio, and it was the 3.75 uh, capacity. So pretty much what this is, is you have the higher capacity, 3750 rear axle. Um, the 3750 rear axle was a 9-inch. Um, the 44s were only available in the lighter uh, trucks, uh, and they were used interchangeably with the lower spline count uh, 9 inches. Uh, this would be the higher spline count 9 inch. This was meant more for like tow packages, uh, if you wanted the heavier drive line, things like that. Um, you could find those in automatics manuals. They were used interchangeably. It has to do with your vehicle's capacity. 3750 is actually what my 1979 Ford F-150 was, and that was the heavier of the models that you could purchase. Um, usually you tend to get a uh, 1310 front drive shaft, uh, so that's the series of your U-joint, and a 1330 rear drive shaft. I have not seen a 1350. Um, 79 for the pickup trucks, I do not know if this applies to 79 Broncos, could get full 1330 front and rear joints. My F-150, my 79 had the original drive lines front and rear when I got it, and those were both 1330 shafts. So you could have 1330 heavier shafts. I think they were having problems with front shafts breaking on 1310s, so they may have changed that. 78s have not seen a 1330 front shaft at all. So that was a 79 change from what I can tell. Anyhow, uh, moving on. So we have our J code for our front axle. This just indicates being a Bronco, there was no two-wheel drive Bronco. Your front axle was used 73 through 79 code. Uh, so that was just that code was used throughout that whole range. And that just indicated that you had power steering. I haven't seen a 78, 79 Bronco without power steering. They're almost all going to be J code. So um, moving on, 
Uh, we'll go down to the lower identifiers. These are fairly easy. You have your GVW. This is your gross vehicle weight. So uh, combined with your uh, vehicle's weight plus what your capacity is, this is with minimum, with your minimum of options put on. This does not count dual battery, which would add extra weight and other things like that. Um, this is your max loaded weight for your vehicle. Um, so you would have to subtract whatever your base weight is from your vehicle to find out what this number is completely. But full weight towing capacity is 6,100 pounds on this truck. F-350s, you're usually going to see like 10,000, sometimes 98. Anyhow, um, so the GVW is 6,100 pounds. So that's how much weight you can pull counting your own vehicle's weight. Um, that's not always the, just the rolling weight. That's just the full capacity. The next one is never listed, and you will never find a like a decoder for this on the decoders, especially fortification. They will just skip right over this. You will not always see a year date stamped in here, but there will not be a labeled identifier. A lot of later trucks and some earlier ones have the actual year date of the vehicle stamped into the warranty plate. This being 1978 made that really easy to identify. Didn't have to go through any of this to go ahead and find out what the year of the Bronco was. The next one is going to be your DSO. Your DSO is your district code. That's your sales area that your vehicle was ordered through. Um, so we will go ahead and go through fortification for this. This will go over your district code information here. Your district code information is just down in that lower corner. Uh, and they even go over this right here. It just identifies the district in which you're ordered or, or, or in which who actually ordered the unit. So you had different sales districts. Um, those sales districts were things like Boston, Buffalo, New York, larger places like that. When you're talking about California trucks, which there's a lot of them, a lot of them that came from like California that went up to Washington, um, that went up to Idaho, different places like that, because trucks did change hands between dealers. Um, so like if you had a, say, Western Washington truck, you're more likely going to have a 74 code because the area and the dealer that ordered it from was closest to Seattle's 74 code district area. But say you had a dealer that wanted to go ahead and get a vehicle and it was DSO'd to another dealer and they transferred it. Well, if they're in Seattle in 74, it's a pretty good chance that if they found it in California, especially Central California slash Northern California, they got it from San Jose, which is a 72 code, really close to them. Um, I don't know how these were organized. Um, you know, they just kind of they just kind of threw them out there. It's just whoever ordered the vehicle to be built, it went out that way. It does not mean it's a special order, especially when they say like so that you could have a DSO as listed here, which is domestic special order. It's not really a special order truck. Dealers did request certain trucks. Certain trucks were just built to build, and then they went ahead and sent them to certain DSO areas. Doesn't mean you're custom. Could be. Probably not. Uh, FSO is foreign special order, so that would be like sending out to, uh, sending out to like uh, uh, different areas, Canada, things like that. Um, and you could also have, in the rare occasion, the LSO, limited production option. That could be things like freewheelers. Sometimes you'll see that. Um, LSOs will also come up with things that are like custom order trucks. A customer asked for a particular truck. Sometimes it will come up as an LSO code. Sometimes it will be a DSO code. Just depending on what felt, Ford felt like doing that day, I guess. So you can go over Ford to Canada here. Um, these are all correct for Bronco and pickup truck, so you're good there. Uh, these are your DSOs for the United States. Um, you could have one for export, which is 90 through 99. Those would be sent to Mexico, Canada, all sorts of different countries. Um, I think Australia was also included there, but I don't think they had very many U.S. production vehicles because uh, they had uh, FPV back then. Um, you could have transportation services. This would be things like buses, um, chassis cabs for servicing of vehicles, government vehicles, things like that. Recreation would be like RV, things like that. They also had like American Red Cross. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, body companies. When you think about Centurion and things like that, that wasn't Ford. Um, when you think of places like Durango, Durango was not Ford. They would send these off to go ahead and be built. Sometimes body company will also come up as like chassis manufacturers. So a lot of chassis cabs came out this way. They'd be turned into RVs, ambulances, the likes. Um, I don't know what the home office reserve is all about. Government. That's kind of self-explanatory. Those are just government vehicles, 83s. So this one, district code 72 for Adams, 
is a 72 code. So that would be San Jose, California. So either this was a California truck, or Bronco in this case, uh, being pulled from uh, the west coast of Oregon, from what he explains in his video and through talking with him, it could have been a truck that was driven up from California, was originally a California sales truck, or it could have been at a dealer, and maybe it sold out in Portland or who knows where else. So about anything can be, that's just who ordered the vehicle and who it was originally sent to. So it went through train, um, went ahead and made it to San Jose, they processed it, and it went wherever it went from there. But anyhow, I hope this kind of goes over some of the stuff with VIN codes. Um, I'll probably touch on this again when I decode my 79. This is not a replacement for going to like a Marty Report. Marty Report is a really, really good resource. Um, I'll leave their link in my uh, description below. Um, but as far as going over VIN plates for your, for your warranty code, which by the way, this is not legally a VIN number. It even lists it right on there. Um, this is just for warranty, but some states treat it as such because there were no identifier laws back then. But technically, um, if you want to call it a uh, identifier, you have to go over your sticker tag. Um, some of this information is kind of spelled out on your sticker tag, but those tend to fade over the years. Um, I want to say Marty Reports is reproducing those. So if you do have your information, you can take a photo of it. You can have them reproduce it. In some cases, they will already have your information to go ahead and reproduce that. They also reproduce these warranty tags. Um, if you have any questions or anything, go ahead and uh, leave it in the comments section. This is fairly long. I, I've gone over this for about 30 minutes, so so much for keeping down to low, uh, low uh, uh, minute counts. But uh, I figured this would be good information to kind of go through, and this would also provide Adam with some good information to go ahead and start with with his VIN. Um, so if he wants to go ahead and do a restoration or anything, you can go ahead and start finding yourself some black tops. You can find some vinyl black bucket seats. Um, you know, you know what fiber roof was used, you know what color was used on the inside of the vehicle, and you also know it was a Ranger, so it more than likely had some wood trim in it, which, by his video, he had. I'll go ahead and link his video again right up above. Uh, if you want to go ahead and click that, uh, he is an awesome resource, Paper Beats Rock. Uh, Adam is just like me. He does not know everything, but he's an awesome guy, puts out some really good content, um, and I love watching his stuff, man. So um, he's been a really good guy and super positive. Um, so I like kind of watching his stuff. His two Broncos are pretty awesome to watch in that crew cab. I'm really looking forward to see a lot more with that, um, especially being that I have my own chassis cab that I want to start kind of building, so I might steal some ideas from him. Um, anyhow, um, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe if you want to see more things like this. I'll go more in depth to things like this and maybe even start providing scanned copies of things in this manual. Um, it's always good to have subscribers. Um, I would not mind monetizing, but I don't have to. Um, please watch uh, some videos on Robert's uh, 1978 Bronco. Uh, hop over to Adam at Paper Beats Rock. Uh, good guy. Gave me a shout out, so I'll shoot him one. Um, and yeah, I will be seeing you on the next one. Hopefully when all this snowy weather kind of uh, goes away, we will go ahead and um, touch more on the 79 and maybe a little bit more on my 76 IDI swap uh, F250. Uh, be cool to kind of watch, uh, kind of have you guys watch and see how I went ahead and did a dually swap on that. So we'll have some more video videos coming. Um, thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have a good day.